After 14 years in the making, fans of the Grateful Dead are finally getting a much-awaited inside look into the band's complex and often dark history. Long Strange Trip explores the Dead's journey from its psychedelic Bay Area roots to its international and multi-million dollar cult stardom. Here's a look at the band's devout fans, which makes up a group known as Deadheads. Grateful Dead shows were like a mandala. You know, people knew where they would sit. There would be, you know, the Phil Zone people out here, and then the Jerry side people over here. There would be the Deaf Zone, where people would be holding balloons that vibrated with the music because they could not hear. But by holding the balloons, they could literally sense the vibrations of the music, and they would dance. And there would be a live sign language interpreter providing interpretation of the lyrics. There was you know, a whole crew of wharf rats who were people following the 12-step path who would have meetings during the set breaks. Spinners would be out in the hall, you know, having literally religious experiences because they thought Garcia was a prophet and they'd be bowing down. Or there were tapers. They would, you know, go there with all their gear and set up their gear. Amir Barlev directed the documentary Long Strange Trip, and he joins me now. Amir, welcome. Thanks for having me. So this was a labor of love for you, to say the least. This film is four hours long. Is this a movie just for deadheads, or is this for a wider audience? Emphatically, not just for deadheads. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the deadheads were notoriously bad at explaining why we loved the Grateful Dead, and so I made a film uh, for the, you know for the for the wives and husbands of deadheads, <laughs> so that uh, so that they could finally understand why we've been raving about this band. And tell me about this process. I mean, you know, it's four hours long, and yet. I know you had a hard time getting it down to that length. I mean, what was that process like? Because you have the surviving core band members participating in this film. Well, th nobody's ever made a film about the Grateful Dead, so that meant that uh, for 40 some odd years, uh, incredible stuff was, was piling up on their vault shelves. So I had a wealth of stuff to work with. I tried to cut it down to four hours, but there was just too much. You know, the, the amount of laughing gas parties alone would have added up to about two and a half uh, hours. So I had a lot of home movies and a lot of great interviews, and uh, it wanted to be at least four hours long. I mean, how did you get your hands on some of this? It's incredible footage, never be seen before a lot of it. They opened up this vault. They have actually a vault where all this stuff is. They opened it up for me, and I was like a kid in a candy shop. And so what was that like for you? It's a great rock and roll story. You know, I mean, this is uh, perhaps the best rock and roll story. And I don't even think you need to like this band to find this uh, a great story. As you said in the uh, intro, they started off with humble beginnings in San Francisco and became, you know, one of rock's uh, most lasting acts. And along the way, uh, there's uh, a lot of humor and some tragedy. So it was, it was a fun film to make. So the title of your film is Long Strange Trip, and your movie does not shy away from the band's heavy drug use. What role did drugs play in the evolution of the Grateful Dead? I, you know, the, 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 the evolution is the key word, right? So the drugs meant something in the early years and something probably pretty different in the late years. You know, there's a, there's a line in the film, Bob Weir says, uh, taking LSD isn't fun. You have to work through some stuff. Uh, um, I think in the later years they moved on to more fun drugs like alcohol and cocaine and heroin um, that had uh, an impact on, you know, and people died. Um, but in the early years it meant something very different. So you end the film with lead guitarist Jerry Garcia's death back in 1995. He struggled for years with uh, cocaine and heroin addictions. What do band members have to say now about his passing decades later? Well, I think everybody misses Jerry. Um, the the funny thing about Jerry is he was never thinking too much about longevity, which I'm sure, you know, I, I didn't know the guy personally, but I'm sure if you were a friend or family member was challenging. But um, uh, I think he always had an eye on uh, on, on his eventual demise and, and probably didn't spend a lot of time um, thinking about the future. Hmm. The, uh, the dead officially disbanded back in the mid-90s. Uh, now one of Jerry Garcia's guitars is expected to fetch nearly $1 million at an auction later this month. What do you think it is that makes the Grateful Dead so relevant still today? 
Yeah, I, I can I can answer that by saying I went to a concert the other night, uh, one of my favorite bands, uh, not the Grateful Dead, um, and and um, they played my favorite song, and the guitar player stepped into the light, and he played the guitar solo exactly as I remember it from the album, and on one hand I was happy, uh, on the other hand I felt, geez. You know, uh, it must be boring for this guy to play the same s guitar solo the same way mm -hmm. night after night, tour after tour. The Grateful Dead were different. They 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 would have seen that as theater in a way. You know, uh, uh, with music, you get up and you and you play. You don't perform. And I think that's refreshing. And I think uh, it doesn't matter what age you are. That's something you pine for. It's an authentic experience with music. And on a personal note, what did this band mean to you? I, I think of, uh, I'm a parent, I have three kids, and uh, I worry about my kids, they're not teenagers yet, but I'm always worried about their uh, experimenting with the drug called social media, and, their, and I wish they could go to Grateful Dead concerts as I did as a teenager, because it was good, healthy fun. All right, Amir Barlev, thank you so much for stopping by, I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Long Strange Trip will be screened at select theaters across the U.S. for one night only Thursday before its final release June 2nd on Amazon Prime.